Hey guys, welcome back to the Message Recap Podcast from Transformation Church. I'm one of your hosts, the Justin Oswald. Uh, unmistakable. Uh, unmistakable. Undeniable. Undeniable. What's Incomparable. That? Is that a word? Incomparable? Sure. That's a word, Uncom- right? Incompar- Incomparable? I, I think so. If it ain't, it is that's now. why you... That's why we we can only use it in reference to Justin Oswald. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, we're here, uh, and this is Brad, the lead pastor of Transformation Church. Back again. Back again in the uh, a newlywed man. Kind of. <laughs> a re newlywed. Re re newlywed. Uh, yeah. No. So we're here for the message recap. Yeah. We started um, the fourth year, round four. Of sushi, sushi sex, sex, and, and subtitles. subtitles. We ate sushi today. We did. Maybe that was why I wanted sushi so bad. Because I wanted to talk about it yesterday. Yeah. Now you have round four, which is just year number four of doing the same series. I keep trying to change the title, and everyone says no. Everyone's like, no, you have. It's like, it's the thing we do. It's our brand. You can't. You have to you have yeah. keep doing it. So. Yeah, I, um, and it's, it's, I guess, starting to catch on, you know. Yeah. Sometimes those things take a little while. In a sense, it's not, it's a little provocative, but it's not, I mean, it's not that provocative. I, I guess maybe in the church world it is. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's all just like comparative, well, right? Like the, other churches. The problem yeah. and the problem with it and not uh, the, the good problem is it doesn't, the name doesn't tell you what it is. That's fair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the it's provocativeness of yeah. it yeah, is yeah. it, it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't say that this is a relationship series, right? Like, what does sushi sex and like? If you're, that's why it's funny when you introduce it. Like people that are new to the church, and they're like, what, what? is sex, sushi? Like, what is that? Yeah, um, which is fine uh, because what are y'all uh, doing next because week? like it's like it's like we said last week in our little, uh, you know, our little reunion uh, episode last week is yeah. um, it's good stuff. I mean, it's good content and. Um, you know, relate from a relationship standpoint and all those things. So, yeah. um, yeah, last, uh, so we're, we're in the fourth year of doing it round four. Yep. Um, and then yesterday was, uh, the first, the first, yeah, uh, this past Sunday was the first, first message for this year. Yeah. Yeah. I keep saying yesterday. Sorry guys. We're recording this on Monday. Yeah. Um, I don't know when you listen yeah, to this, this past but. Sunday was the first week of this year's series. Yeah. 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 And, um, I mean, yeah, it, it, I thought it went really, really well. I think that uh, it's a topic that not enough people talk about. And I think because for a good reason, I think a lot of people don't know how to talk about it. A, churches in general just aren't good talking about sex, period. <laughs> um, and I think historically, you got saved to what, 18? No, 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 like 22, 23. Okay, so you were later. That's right, yeah. that's right. So you got saved 22, 23. So I don't know, and John... No, I don't think you were part of this either. Were either one of you part of the purity movement? I was. Actually. Well, okay. We did it. Our the the churches we were a part of. I don't know like, both yeah, of yeah, them. For teenagers. I don't know. True if, Love Waits. True Love Waits. The whole all this nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Us two, yeah. Yeah, we did do the True Love Waits, and and I don't remember about the first church that me and John. I'm looking at John because we were, we've been together a long time. Yeah. But we we did do a small version of it. Yeah. Uh, whenever I was a teenager. Yeah. yeah. And then whenever I took over youth. For the horrible two years that I took over you. <laughs> um, By the way, John's here. John, we, we uh, call that finding out what's not your calling. And I had to do it too. Yeah. Did I fire you? Did I have to fire you? Or like step no, you down? I literally said, I can't do this anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I was like, I don't know why y'all put me in here to begin with. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Small uh, church mentalities, man. But yeah. the... I'm not going to name names, but the sure, last yeah. church that we were at, um, the senior pastor asked us to make sure that we do a true love weights, a purity yeah. uh, deal. Yeah. Well, well so, I, I think I know where you're going with this. Uh, you're probably going to where I think there's a lot of the, the, a lot of, um, well-intentioned. Yeah. 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 You, you know, I mean, cause yeah. obviously purity is, uh, I'm fine with, not purity a bad thing. Is, I mean, yeah, I'm fine with purity as a movement, the purity culture of the late nineties, early two thousands, mid two thousands was outrageously unhealthy because it didn't solve any problems. It created a lot of conversations with no periods, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Other people are more than welcome to have their own as well. In my opinion, it started a lot of conversations about sex, and it was like, just don't do it. But then it didn't. 
in my opinion, again, it didn't paint the beauty of God's design, God's intent, what it's for. Like, it's a good thing. It, it The purity culture as a whole was just kind of like, sex is bad, don't do it until you're married. You know, it's like, I, I, I don't remember who it was, maybe it was Pastor Chris, was like, you know, sex is dirty and nasty and filthy, so save it for the person you love. You know what I mean? It was like, that kind of was like the overall, even unintentional theme around the purity culture, which is why I'm not a big fan of it. Now, purity as a standard, of course I'm for that. Like that's a part of righteousness. Like I'm all for that. We're discussing purity culture, which is a yeah. culture. And, you know, and so. it doesn't mean like even two love weights was a program that many churches and people probably went through. And we did it, it at one point yeah, at our old church. It, so yeah. yeah, it, yeah. And it doesn't mean that everything that was taught in that is bad or wrong or heresy. No, none of those things. Not their heart either. Yeah. 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 It's just, um, I don't know. I didn't grow up in that. I only did it from uh i don't even think i was a leader in and in, in looking at john i wasn't involved in the teaching of it at that point when we did it yeah. at our old church um uh, i knew we did it i wasn't involved with it oh but, i was but what i'm <laughs> what, what i'm um what i'm saying is my impression is it, it it's a it's a whole lot of behavior modification it, not a heart it's not addressing the heart issue behind mm -hmm. Well, uh, behind what for those that group of people would be sin, right? You know, it's not sin for a married uh, um, um, two married people to engage in something, but for the group of people that that was being taught to, it would have been sin, and we agree with that. Sure. But I don't think what those things did was address maybe the heart issue behind that, or like practical ways. It was more behavior modification, and I think if you read through, I think I think behavior modification is not the answer. And when you talk about the scripture as a whole, you know, that's the sure. Christianity isn't it's behavior modif modification. It's, it's soul yeah. transformation. So, um, yeah. you know, I always, jo I always joked about what, well, I mean, this can get really deep, you know, this conversation, not even getting to the message, but you know, for a lot of, for a lot of people, the heart could be there. Like take a, take a teenage kid, the heart could be there to want to commit the sin he just doesn't have the opportunity to do it. So the behaviorally, he's not doing it, Sure, which is the outcome that some of these programs teach. Mm -hmm. But the heart is, had he out, the, had he had the opportunity, he would do it. Yeah. You, you, like, yes. you know what I'm saying? 100%. Like, so Man. behaviorally, he's succeeding. The heart behind it is he's failing every day. Yeah. And well, that's, I think so that's, that's what's better. That's part of the, the problem that you deal with. Like, like you said, the heart problem where, this person's not having sex. So, so if they're not having sex and this other teenage couple is having sex, right. Is that person. And, and that, if that person, I'm going all people are, if that particular individual is boasting himself up in self-righteousness, right. is he any better than the two kids that are having sex? No, no. I mean, now there's a sin against the body. We have to deal with all that. But like at the end of the day, no sin is still sin. That's why we haven't dealt with the real problem, right? The real problem is your delight is in something other than the Lord. You want yeah. your, you want the creation over the creator. That's, that's the problem. And we have to get down to that problem. And I just don't think any of those things deal with that problem very well. And it convinces young people in particular that if you can white knuckle or grin and, you know, grit your teeth hard enough, you can obtain righteousness and you can't, you can't, you 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 will boast yourself up in your self righteousness or you will boast yourself up in yeah. your sin. And both of those things will eventually destroy you. And it doesn't teach you to lean into Christ's righteousness for your salvation, which we have a number of people in our church right now. That is their greatest struggle. Trusting in Christ for their own salvation, which that sounds so crazy to say out loud, but if we were to sit down with a lot of people that grew up in churches and, and even people in other churches right now, and we were to drill down on their perspective, particularly when it comes to sex, they would tell you they think they can obtain righteousness through abstinence. It's like, no, because what about your porn problem? Right. What about the fact you can't go to the beach without undressing every girl in a bikini with your eyes? Or for girls with undressing a guy and a baby, like seeing his muscles or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, you haven't really solved anything. You've just abstained, but there's still a heart issue. There's still a lust issue. There's still, you know, and so well, we just have to get to the bottom. And, of this and then right. too, and, and, you know, again, I don't know that I even know the solution to some of this, be honest with you. Um, but it did point out, like, I think through that movement, there was like 
it created almost this, and maybe we see that just in American culture in general, in some regard, this severe double standard toward women. Right. You know, I mean, how many times where it was a, it was a youth trip to the beach and the list of stuff that girls had to wear was this long, but dudes, sh- I got sh- whatever, got, yeah. you know, you, like shirts off sure. and the whole, the like, guys didn't have to wear a cover up. Girls didn't like, and again, I, un- I think it's well intentioned for the most part, sure. you know, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, you're almost telling girls, like, don't wear anything that makes the boys lust after you, you know, where it's like, yeah, that, that works. So th- well. That's not this, you know, that, that, that's yeah. to me, that's verging on telling the girl, like, if you weren't just like that, he wouldn't have raped you. It's like, yeah. what? what? Or maybe he just shouldn't rape yeah. someone. Yeah. You know, guys in the 1920s were still <laughs> lusting after women and they had like 36 layers of dresses on. They were like, dang, you. look at them ankles. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but yeah. right. Yeah. So, Her chin line is on point. Today. Right, right, right. So <laughs> I'm just saying it's like, I get it. I'm not trying to hate on those people. What I'm saying is like. It, there's quite a double yeah, standard there, sure. uh, you know, in, in that, some that, regard. But and I think the, the bottom line to it, which is what we were kind of what we opened up with in talking about it, is it doesn't work. the The historical approach to purity and some of those things just doesn't work the way we hoped it would. So, at least at Transformation Church, I can't speak for every other church, but at Transformation Church, we've taken it upon ourselves to try to have healthy conversations about sex and relationships that give people clear directives. And try to posture their heart correctly and all those things. And so Sushi, yeah. Sex, and Subtitles yeah. is, is it. What, That's the series. What we're not saying is those things are all bad. Don't do them. And people sure. are just going to be people. And it's okay. Of course. It's not, not what we're saying either. So no, um, I think there's just holes in those nets. You're yeah, trying to yeah, capture yeah. people and, and bring them in to do the right thing. And I think there's some holes in those nets that no one thought to mend. Right, right. And, and surely there are people who went through some of those programs that um, – did it the right way and, 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 you know, yeah. did yeah. not fall into sin in that regard. Like, yeah. you know, we're not, this is not a, it's not an attack on all of that. Um, yeah. it's, it's, of it, it's like pointing out at, at the end of the day, if you, if you talk to, if you could survey every person and then give honest answers that ever went through true love weights in the United States in the years that that was a thing, my guess is the failure rates pretty high, pretty high. That would be my guess. Yeah. Just, just knowing the history of, where we come from in the program that we did well, it in our church, but the, the kids we had relationships with yeah, that absolutely. we knew that, you know, did the wedding ceremony, which I always honestly thought was kind of weird. They, they like married Jesus in a sense. I'm not going to get in all that, but, um, but like the people that did the thing had the ring, you know, but, but yeah. you know, that, that, that still messed up along the way, which, um, so, so I think the, if, if you're, if the success of that program was judged on how many people, held to it it's probably a high failure rate would be my would be if i was a betting man would be would be uh probably pretty bad yeah which which every, every single one of them failed <laughs> within within yeah. two years well and i think that you know. so and i think that's part of the problem not to keep harping on it but i mean i think it's just i think part of the problem is for a lot of teenagers you're creating conversations that like you're deepening conversations and some of that and i mean take any teenager take any kid period when you tell them not to do something, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just, so there's part of it is that part of it's just sin nature, but part of it is also this. And I think that this is what a lot of people struggle with. Sex is the sex before marriage is one of the only things that God said was good that you just have to wait for. Right? Like think about sin as a whole. There's never a moment where, um, where, murder is like a good idea. I'm not talking about like innocent to innocent murder. You know what I mean? Like we can get into the weeds of that, but it's like, there's never a moment where murder just becomes like a pathway of worship. We'll put it that way. There's never a moment where lying becomes a pathway of worship. There's never a moment where idolatry or coveting your neighbors while you use the 10 commandment. Like there, there's never a moment where any of that all of a sudden becomes okay. Except that, yeah. But with sex, it is. That's the only thing that... I've never thought of it that way, but... The sex is the only thing that you, you're you told, don't do it, and then one day you're told, do it as much as you want. Matter of fact, it's a good thing. Matter of fact, it pleases the Lord when you do. Like, And you're supposed to just do a 15-minute ceremony at an altar, and now all of a sudden everything you learned for 14 years, 20 years, how you know, whatever, has now been turned on its head, and now it's just different. And so I think that it's just... 
uh, a different paradigm, which obviously I think that's why so many people have failed at trying to hold to purity standards and all the things, which is why I think our goal shouldn't be purity. Um, our goal should be righteousness and, um, you know what I mean? It's like, and so just, and we're going to unpack that in the weeks to come, but all that to say is, I think that's why th- series like this are so important. We need to talk about sex. We need to talk about marriage and we need to talk about relationships and we just need to do it in a way that's not so like corny Christian, like, you know, when you're up there and you're like, all right, guys, we're going to talk about you know, and like, or what, like, or you don't even say the word, you know, we're going to talk about physical intimacy. It's like, freaking just say it. Like, just say, just say it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> kids are talking about it in second grade now. Like, just say it, you know? Um, and just, just getting it out there. So I think it's just a, it's, it's a necessary thing. And uh, you know, the church loves it. You know what I mean? Like it was, was, I think it's so funny is like the people in our church going, I know some of you are going to watch and listen to this forties, fifties, sixties, and they're like, let's go sushi sex and subtitles on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm like, that's so funny to me. I knew the 20 somethings would be all about it, but it's so funny to me to see the old generation. But it again, is. they, they know what we know. This is such an important thing and it's just practical. It's practical help. What does the Bible say? And let's, let's have marriages that honor God and, and people that honor God that are in marriages and healthy people build healthy relationships. Right, John? Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, let's get to uh, talking about the yesterday's message a little bit, talking about marriage. And I know we talked about some myths, um, you know, destroying some, some myths and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talked about, uh, you know, we, you know, we first we kind of talked about the things we didn't realize marriage was or wasn't. You know what I mean? Like we, there's just some of those things and there's just myths that people have believed in marriage, you know, um, and the first myth that people believed in marriage uh it, it's the, the reality is you're not going to marry the person of your dreams. You know what I mean? So, um, people think I'm going to marry the person of my dreams. It's like, no, you're, you're not going to marry the person of your dream. There's nobody in the world that hits those check boxes. So like, you know, um, you, you'll be lucky to get some of your boxes checked, but you're not good. You know, well, it's like someone, you know, people think there's like, there's one person for everybody. It's like, I don't believe that because if one person in society gets that wrong and marries the wrong one, then it messes the whole rest yeah, of everybody up. Out, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's messed leave. up. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. 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 And I, and I totally agree with that. I mean, there was a moment in my life where I was legitimately in a child, in a, in a situation where my wife, Ashley now, uh, and there was another young woman and I wouldn't say I was like picking between the two, but God was showing me, I was dating the other girl and God had shown me in a moment that who I was supposed to be with was, you know, was Ashley, but it was, I don't, it was never from the standpoint of like, you're going to wreck this entire world structure. If you, <laughs> if you were to marry, like, you know I, mean? right. like, I think there's multiple people that most people could marry and they could be happy and they could glorify God in it. And, but you know, well, I think there's also yeah. something to like, you know, if if you pick if you picked the quote unquote wrong person and you're young, maybe you're not even saved following the Lord yet. But it's like there's something to that. Like the Lord works all things out for the in, in some way. You know, it's like yeah, of course you know like so maybe you pick the yeah maybe you pick the wrong person and like or in an i in an ideal situation if you were like ordering a spouse and it had a checklist you may would yeah. Or, check a different box than what you're getting. And I know that's a terrible analogy, but like, yeah. it's not, it's not build a bride, you know, yeah, you're right, not, right, you right, know, right. so it's like, if you were going to, you know, like if you, like for some guys, maybe you're, you, you know, you fall in love, you're going to marry someone that has a kid. Like in an ideal world, maybe you, you would, if you were going to pick that, you wouldn't pick raising someone else's kid, right. but that's the hand you were dealt. So you, you do, you, yeah, you yeah, deal yeah. with it and you, 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 well, you know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's not yeah. that big a deal. Right. Well, there's an old, there's, I was, I heard the story and then I, a couple of years ago and I saw it again on Instagram recently and I thought, you know, that's so, uh, it, it doesn't intend to communicate providence and sovereignty, but it does kind of. And uh, essentially it was like, there is this, um, you know, there's this old man um, and, um, he had a horse and, uh, someone was driving their truck and they hit his horse and it killed the horse. You know, everyone came to him. I'm so sorry. This is terrible. He said, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, you know? And, uh, and so then they replaced that horse with 
three horses. And everyone came to him like, oh, this is awesome. You know what I mean? Like, he said, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, you know. Uh, and then his grandson was trying to train one of the horses, knock him off, and broke his back. They came to him was like, we're so sorry. This is, this is a tragedy. He said, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And the next day they came in, and there was a draft for the war, and his son didn't have to go to war because he had broken his back. <laughs> You know, like, oh, this is great. This is good news. He's like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It was like, and it's just like, it was a story that continued that way where it's like, you don't know how God's working all of those right. things out. You know what I mean? Like, and I think it's the same way in, in relationships. It's like all of a sudden, you know, if you could fast forward 20 years from now and see that God was going to use those two people to lead each other to himself and then raise a Christian family. But when they were 18, it didn't look that way. Um, or, you or, know. Or it's like, I always think of the, um, the Garth Brooks songs, um, the unanswered prayer songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, there's something to that too, yeah. really, especially like early on. Absolutely. I guess maybe in life, but anyhow. Um, yeah. So you're, you're not going to marry the person of your <coughs> dreams. Uh, and then we said you're going to marry the person of your desires, right? Your desires will override your dreams. I think that's just in general, but definitely in marriage. You know, it's like you can have the dream to be a millionaire, but if your desire is to buy that car right now and that jet ski right now and... <laughs> you know what I mean? Blow that money on stupid things right now and only work 20 hours a week right now. Then your dream to be a millionaire can exist, but your desires are going to over override it, right? That's right. Um, and we said the person of your desires has their own desires. So if you're going to get into a relationship, you, you're going to end up with the person of your desires, but then they got their own desires. And so you're going to have to deal with not just the person, but you're going to have to deal with the fact that they're coming in expecting a few things. Um, and then we said, you're going to be expected to be the person of their dreams. So you're not going to get the person of your dreams, but you're going to be expected to be the person of their dreams. So you have to lower your expectation, but understand they're coming in with a heightened expectation. So right. that's what makes relationships hard. And at the end of the day, all that leads to this idea that marriage is just a lifelong commitment to compromise. You know, your, your, your marriage is a lot of compromise. It's a lot of, you know, give and take. And, you know, we kind of talked about that the other day. Yeah, as, but, it, as it should be. Yeah. And so we talked about this idea of being devoted to one another in love and outdo one another and showing honor, which is Romans 12.10. Um, and so um, we essentially boiled Sunday down to asking a few questions. We wanted to challenge everyone to just ask some questions, right? And, and in asking those questions... We were leading up to something, this idea of love, um, but we were talking particularly like single people, but even people who are married. And so, you know, because the basic premise of Sunday was to help people realize if what you want is a marriage, you're not ready for marriage. If what you want is a person to serve then you might be ready for marriage. Right. If what you want is a relationship so that you're not lonely anymore, you're setting yourself up right now for failure because you are being selfish in your wants and needs. You're not saying, I want someone that I can serve. I want someone that I can love. And when I say love, give to sacrifice for. I, I want what most people mean when they say, I want to get married is I want someone for me. Well, mm -hmm. may, but the majority of marriage is being something for someone. It's not getting someone to be there for you. Now, you hope it's reciprocated. Don't get me wrong. Well, that's, I mean, theoretically, <laughs> if both people have that mentality, sure, you're, yeah, you're getting exactly. that. But yeah. But, but, and so the goal for Sunday, particularly for those that are single, is we need to dismantle this idea that, that because if this person does come into a relationship with you and they're in it for you and you're in it for you, now the whole relationship is centered around you. Yeah. Um, and that's how things get broken so quickly. And so some of the questions we asked, number one, is this person someone, uh, I'm sorry, uh, is this person worth <laughs> sacrificing for? Is this person worth sacrificing for? Because you're going to sacrifice a lot to be married. Right, John? Oh, do I know. <laughs> what does that mean, John? <laughs> it means a lot. John said, I said what I said. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to get Savannah on the next episode. <laughs> is this person worth Hey, she sacrifices stuff too. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of sacrifice in marriage. Um, but no, is this person worth, is, is this someone worth sacrificing for? Because you're going to give up a lot to be married. Like, that's just the name of the game, right? Um, is this person someone I should become one with? And we kind of unpacked that on Sunday. This idea, you know, I think a lot of Christian circles kind of call it soul ties. You know, are you are you truly prepared 
to take on the spirit of the person that you're talking about being with. Like, because if you are, there are serious ramifications to that. You know, we, we kind of laid out Sunday where, you know, you can watch and like when we have sex with someone, we take on a portion of their spirit. So if you have someone that's consumed with narcissism, you have someone that's a manipulator at heart, you have someone that's greedy, selfish, you have someone that's dealing with significant lust issues, you have someone that what like <laughs> addictions, whatever, you'll watch the other person take on some of the characteristics of that person. And so um, is this person I should become one with? And I said in one of the services, I wish I said it in all of them, it's like, and is this someone you're comfortable reproducing with? Like, right. when you look at the worst version of this person, are you prepared to have one or two or six of them little people running around that are all the same way? Right. <laughs> that person reproducing, it's like, you just need to be thinking about that, not just... I really wish I could be married right now. It's like, man, you really need to be thinking about the long-term Cause, ramifications. Because that is a, leg- uh, I mean, a real consequence. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting pregnant is a, a real consequence of, yeah. of that. So absolutely. So, so just processing that as someone I should become one with, um, is this person someone I can love without changing them? Like, and that's a hard one. Is this, is this person someone I can love without changing them? Um, and, and one of the things we said is you need to be prepared to love them without changing them while being expected to change for them. Yeah. So you're not, you don't get to change them, but you are going to have to change it for them. Right. Which is what the next person what's the next thing says is this someone, is this person, someone I'm willing to change for, um, you know, and I think that one, even before that though, about changing them. Yeah. I think you see that a lot in people and I don't know if it's stereotypical, but like we've all, I think it's an easy one we can all relate to where you hear of like the, a woman wanting to marry the guy that's like the player. And then they're much like, they think they're the one that can change him. Yeah. I'm going to uh, tame the beast. Or right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, no, you're not. Good luck. Yeah. 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 If he's cheated on his last 20 girlfriends, you can bet your life. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it's 100%. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. absolutely. I think that that's, you're right. And I think we see that a ton, you know, Aaron Burke said, uh, when you're looking for a relationship, you got to be looking for a pattern over potential. And we said that on Sunday where it's like, man, who they've proven that they are is who they will remain being. Yeah. Now, obviously, obviously there is like, there are guys, we'll go back to my analogy. There are guys that were that guy that yeah. at some, something happened in their life at some point and they change, Sure. you know, and then whether yeah. that's an encounter with God or whatever, you know, like yeah. that's real. Um, but what? I, but I don't think you should make a decision. I'm going to marry that person based on the potential and the hope that that happens. Correct. Yeah, they need and which to is what we're talking about. Changes that happen long before, before you right, say I do. Right. 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 So. <laughs> yeah. So I think the pattern thing is good. Doesn't mean that it doesn't take God out of the equation. That sure God can can change totally. that person. Yeah. Totally. But if you're if you're just going to get into this, I mean, you may be if if that's what you're doing, and then entering into a covenant with that person. You may be in for some heartache until that change comes. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Or just misery or fights or like who wants to live that way? Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I mean, I could, I think there's, um, dozens of people in our circles and you know, that we know now that would testify to this same thing, you know, like, uh, I saw the pattern before I said yes. And now the pattern is, you know, our mar- my marriage is terrible or it's destroyed this or it's hurt that or now my kids are, you know, having to deal with it or whatever. Like it's, you know, yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot to that. Well, so, I think, yeah. and I think with some, uh, with some people, maybe, maybe more for guys. I don't know. I'm not married. So I don't know, but there's, I'm married now. There is no incentive to change. I don't got yeah. you. What am I, what am I changed yeah, for? Yeah, you know? I think now? there's some people that probably have that mentality. Oh, it's te- a terrible mentality. Yeah. But, you Without know, it's like, um, yeah, especially if what's true from what we see on TikTok and, in, and Instagram, like in the world, this desire for the, I don't know how right or wrong this is. This may be like anecdotal, but it would seem, especially as people get older, if you're not married, the desire to get married is stronger in women. Yes. Like I'm, I'm, you know, like they, they're up yes. against the clock, this, this quote unquote, they feel like they're up against a biological clock in some regard. I, I, yes. I think that there are, 
there are two driving factors behind the pressure for marriage. And I think when it comes to what you're talking about, yes, the biological clock on women run stronger than men. Right. Yes. So what I'm saying is as a woman who does have a desire to get married, but isn't married yet. And as she gets older, is she willing to put up with more than she should have to, or, you know, there's like that Standards window gets small decrease. and it's like, man, for that, for that woman, I feel for that. Yeah. Like that, you know, because you know, your, your, your pool gets smaller. And as someone in my mid thirties, I understand that mm -hmm. I, I understand, I don't know that it's true, but I understand the feeling like the pool's smaller. Sure. You know, so, um, sure. But man, like, you know, those patterns still matter, you know, Absolutely. um, and don't, don't settle for less than you deserve because you're up against this, this quote unquote biological clock, which I remember, it just brings me to this. Um, remember when like spoken word poetry was real popular? Yep. yep. Man, what, what was that group, that Christian group that used to do it? Um, and they were big on YouTube. It was like, you're not talking like beautiful eulogy. Or... No, no, no. It was just like, uh, I'd, I'd have to find it. Anyways, this girl did this uh, spoken word poetry called I Will Wait for You. And that, she's talking about purity and all these things. It's really powerful. But one of the lines in there that, that I always remembered was she says, um, I'm not going to be concerned with my biological clock when I serve the father of time. I was like, that's just a powerful, yeah. like the world will tell you you're getting me. older and da da da. She's like, but I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm in his will. All that to say, I could see how it would appear as we get older that men control the access to marriage, especially for the women who really want to get married. Sure. Yeah. And it's like, man, if that's the case, if, if that's the case, and you got a guy who's got terrible patterns, but does he hold the cards and you got to be really careful if you're that woman, Sure, you know, so you're not deceived, manipulated in some way or made to think he's one way. And then it's like, before you know what you're married and then Absolutely. You're, you're, you realize like, Oh yeah, you're no. my wife now. And I don't allow that or just yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't well, that's what I think women just have to understand their value, you know, and, uh, and, and understand their worth. Um, and you know, that you, you don't have to have a, a man, you know, on your arms or what you, it's like, those things aren't the the end all be all for right. what we're talking about. Like, um, and I remember, you know, there's, you know, there's something worse than being single. Being with the wrong person <laughs> is worse than being single. Like, yeah, well, you know what I mean? Like, so because so, I am single. Let me tell you. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot. Of, there's a lot of positives in that check in that, in that column. <laughs> House is quiet. We yeah, learn to be quiet. Quiet. <laughs> I, that, like. <laughs> There's never words spoken out loud in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it is, there's a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, and there's some days, you know, but the flip side is negatives too. Oh yeah. yeah, Of course. Of course. I had COVID. No one was rubbing my head, you know, or yeah, my, trust me. Or what, yeah, 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 you know no, what I'm saying? No. Like, that was yeah. a shared, that, that yeah. single or not, uh, that was a shared experience yeah. you had with all of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you know, like, but you know, no, I get it. Yeah. No, no one, one was, cuddled me on the couch no last one was night when I was grab you food or yeah, 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 make yeah, you yeah. sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get yeah, it. Yeah. That's but, not a very sexist make me sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, lady. Uh, I know. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I made sandwiches for my wife when she was sick too. So, yeah, yeah. For the record. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what. But, but yes, no, there's obviously, but, um, yeah, no, it is. It's the, you know, the idea that, you know, in, in putting all, putting that much pressure on a relationship, you know, that, and I need, I need to be married because it's going to solve all of these problems. I don't think they solved whatever. any problems. No, it, it, it multiplies marriage, multiplies your joy, right? And it divides your sorrows if you two, if you're compatible, but if you're not compatible, it divides your joys and multiplies your sorrows. And so it's important. I love a good math equation. <laughs> yeah you know that's you know, good it, it, but, so. but yeah I, I just don't and maybe because i've never done like i'm not married like obviously but like i just don't think it solves problems i think there's i think there are things that it can obviously it brings joy and all those things like you said but at the end of the day like your lust problem isn't solved the day you get married no. because you're married now you just that that's why i love like craig rochelle who is a yeah, you know, pastor is the largest church in the nation. Has a big platform, and I love that he always talks about this stuff. Yeah, like if you have a porn issue, getting married is not going to solve that. So you need to get yeah. that under control. Yeah, now. Well, and that's what, and that's this Sunday we're we're going into, um, like kind of the the hunt with men and women and unpacking a little bit of the reality of of what we're looking for and what 
marriage is for each person and, and some of those things so that you can understand because the reality is you're right. And, and if you go into a marriage selfishly, if you go into that marriage and you're super selfish and you're making it all about you, you're going to quickly find out um, that you're miserable. Cause yeah. ma dude, marriage is so hard. Marriage is so, it is such hard work. Like, that's why I, my is, book is so important. <laughs> it needs to come out. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do, yeah, yeah. You uh, single guy, single man's guide, guide to, to marriage. marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what y'all to do? Yeah. That's the kid. Oh, that's the kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, all all that to say is um, that marriage is hard work, and that's why what we talked about Sunday I think is so important because at the end of the day, the last kind of thing we said. Um, the, the bottom line is you got to make the person the prize. It's not about having someone in the position. It's about making the person the prize. And that's so important because marriage is hard work. Well, you know, but I've learned how to, A, I had a, I had a great example with my parents, but B, I've had to learn how to love my wife more than I love myself, more than I love my desires or my wants or my dreams um, and thank God, um, she didn't ask me to lay any of those down, you know, and if she had, if she, we had been looking at marriage together and she was saying, well, I don't want to be a part of any of those things. We needed to assess that before we got married, not right. after. <laughs> and know. that's tough because, you know, especially if uh, I like, just going to know you, like, I know you're motivated and all those things similar to me, but it's like, man, that, that is tough because that to me, obviously there's like deal breakers, Sure. Like when you're early on, sure. like, yeah. you know, like, it, you know, if you want kids and you're, you may be in love with someone, but they say, I never want kids. Like that's kind of a, that's kind a big of, deal. That's kind of a deal breaker. You know, yeah. it's like, unfortunately for you, like you're going to, you're about to experience a little heartbreak, but you'll be okay. You'll find another a person that does want to sure. share those things. But yeah, you know, um, I, I wouldn't want someone to ask me that because I, I feel like if, if, if I have to give up on my dream, then I will give, I would give up on you too. Like the drink, like yeah. the, and, and Grant, I've, Grant I've heard Cardone Grant Cardone said, said yeah, that, said you know, cause it, and, and when he said it, I was like, it's very powerful. You know, it's like the fact that I can pursue my, uh, you know, it's kind of what he was saying. Like I'll never give up on you and I'll make sure you're taken care of. But if I have to give up my dream, yeah. there's a chance like to give up on something that strong, yeah. I'm probably going to fail you too. Yeah. 100%. And it's like, you don't want that. Yeah. Um, but no, that's, uh, but what yeah. I also like yesterday was the, you know, especially if you've been in church at a very length of period of time, like the different types of love, like we've heard like agape and all those things, but, um, the way you brought the analogy of how most people view, like even the world, I, I don't like the fact that marriage is a, th is a thing outside of biblical cr Christianity. Yeah. You know, like I think, I don't know what we should call it. I think the, I think the world has hijacked marriage. I think that, um, Mar marriage belongs to God. He started it. Right. If, if, if you don't, yeah. if you don't believe in God, then you shouldn't be married. Now, call that what, what are the, what's a like? biblical covenant of marriage. Now you can have your civil unions, civil unions and, and all this. Like that, yeah. And, and the, the benefits that come from that legally, you know, like that way, that way to me, it solves the, that we have in the Christian world about like, you know, are you for gay marriage or not? It's like, or those type of things. Like if they, if they were all like if the two people want to enter into a contract of some kind, that's the world's business. And I'm cool with that. Um, marriage is for Christians and in, in the way I view it, mm -hmm. you know, but how you talked about the different types of loves with that, uh, the phileo mm -hmm. is even in the Christian, the church now is like the world where people view it as a contractual agreement yeah, that's because we even signed something yeah. and then it's also easily broken yeah. with just another form, yeah. you know, in a sense where yeah. that's not what God was talking about. Absolutely. In, in that. Yeah. That's what we, we talked about filet of love, which is a, a, a love of mutual benefit. Right. And so people go into marriage thinking this is mutually beneficial. Yeah. But the way Jesus and the apostle Paul explained love in marriage is that he uses the word agape, which is a, um, self-sacrificing love for the other person's highest good. Well, especially in the scripture, Ephesians five yeah. that we were referring to. Yeah. Husbands the, love your wives as that, Christ loved the church. That word is agape. agape yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So like sacrifice, you know, establish self-sacrifice for your wife's highest good, the way Jesus gave self-sacrificially for the world, you know, for 
for our highest good. Which I think is so important that all those scriptures go together and not nitpicked or picked up separately. You know, the whole Ephesians 5.22 you know, and the men in the church love that one, right? Wives, Wives submit, submit to your, to your, to your husbands. Yeah. But the very next one is that uh, husbands agape your wives. Yeah. yeah. Like sacrificed sa- for their highest good. Uh, right. For your wife. Just as Christ loved the church. So yeah. for her to submit, you got to be doing this. It's not, she's not your slave, you know? Just submit to your husband and do what he says. Absolutely, yeah. You know? so it's for your wife's highest good. So, yeah. So that's the the idea. So you got to you know, you know you make the person the prize. So you, you know, um, and that's what we're going to talk about this Sunday. We're going to talk about pursuit this Sunday. But you know, Ashley is my. I treat her. I do my best. I fail constantly. My wife is very gracious, but I do my best to treat her like a prize. Um, you know, even this past weekend, you know, we had a big vow renewal and. It was beautiful, and oh my gosh, we're gonna have to we're gonna record something somewhere just talking through that whole process. You know, maybe we'll do something on here and talk through or something like that. I'd love to get her on, um, and I'm sure the people would too. Um, but just kind of talking through that whole thing, kind of lay out the process of how that came about. Yeah, but, you know, we uh, moderately expensive, and uh, we found out it was a 14 month. It was how long it took to plan it. Oh, so I planned that for 14 months mm. and spent a good amount of money I essentially gave my wife the wedding of her dreams without her knowing it and we had a vow renewal and it's beautiful but that was just it's just one of those things where it's like I'm in a constant pursuit after my wife's joy yeah and her highest good you know and that's something she said she wanted and you know it's like then that's what I'm going to do my best to give her you know and and so I think that that's it's just one of those things where um we have to be in that kind of pursuit. The person is the prize. I'm living my life in my marriage to make sure Ashley is as taken care of as she can possibly be. And, and she responds to that sacrificial love with sacrificial love. And so we're in it together. And that's what well, you mentioned earlier. It's like when both people can do it together, it works, you know, and that's why, that's why it's so important. So, you know, it's, yeah. love is all about you giving act, more than getting. You actually do get someone serving you. Yeah. Because they're coming in with the idea of I'm going to serve yeah. in a sense. But it's not because you're demanding it That's or right. even expecting it. Right. You know what I mean? It's a response. They're serving you as a response out of your sacrificing for them. Right. And right, that's, right. that's, you know, that's a powerful love. So, yeah. So it was a good Sunday. Go check it out if you haven't listened to it yet. Yeah. Go, you need to go uh, watch or listen. on you, you, It's on YouTube, our website, or wherever you find podcasts. Listen to it. It's good. Yeah. Awesome. So. Man, that was good. Okay. So, um we're back in the saddle of this recap, so hey, we'll hey. be back next week uh, for uh, number two. Number two, yeah. Uh, so eat you some sushi, have some sex, and maybe if you're watch <laughs> if you're married. <laughs> <laughs> John's, or uh, flip on the subtitles. John was need. not ready for that. I <laughs> can tell you. I don't that. know if you're married, of course. Yeah, of if, course. Tickled. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, all right. Uh, anyway, see you yeah, guys you can find week. us all at uh, yeah, transformationchurch.com or Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, TikTok, YouTube at Transformation Pensacola. All right, guys, we love you. We'll catch you guys next week for another week, another sermon, another message recap. See you guys.